All right, I'm going to work some examples from the homework of 8-1, and I'm going to do some of the evens because I've assigned you the odds, and I know you guys don't like it when I do that, but you need to practice. So you, me working the um, evens is going to at least get you started on how to set up these problems. All right, <clears throat> number two, we're given a function of velocity here, and this velocity is going to be between zero and pi over two. So we have some endpoints there. <clears throat> and we have to determine when the particle is moving to the right, left, and stopped. Well, what I need to do when we need to find out when the velocity is moving left, right, or start, start, I need to do a velocity sign chart. So that's really important. In order to do a velocity sign chart between um, zero and pi over two, I have to know when the velocity is equal to zero. All right, so velocity is going to be equal to zero when six, <clears throat> when six sine of uh, 3t is equal to zero. Well, the sine is equal to zero when the angle argument is zero. So when 3t equals zero, <clears throat> t equals zero, so we're going to have zero at, is, at zero. And the sine is also uh, zero when the argument is pi. So we can say 3t equals pi and t equals pi over 3. I'm kind of doing u substitution and solving for when this is 0 um, without using the u. Um, and I always check one more to make sure I'm out of the interval. And, and if I'm if sine is 0 at 0, it's also 0 at pi. It's also 0 at 2 pi. So uh, that would be 3t equals 2 pi, and then t equals 2 pi over 3, which is outside of the zone here. So we have another 0 at uh, pi over 3. <clears throat> and what do we know about 6 sine 3t? Well, it has a midline of y equals 0, which means this would be its midline. And it starts, it's a sine curve. It starts on the midline at its phase shift, which it doesn't have. And so if I were to superimpose this graph, it would look something like this, superimposed. Okay, and so I know it's plus, plus, plus here and minus here. Now, if you didn't know that, you could plug a point in here and um, plug it into the velocity and you would see that it's positive. And then you plug a point on this side, which would be a little bit more awkward, but you could do it. And uh, anyway, uh, looking at this, sign chart, we can tell when the particle is moving um, to the right. So we can say particle moves right. What are the intervals? Well, it's going to be from 0 to pi over 3. And uh, that's since v of t is greater than 0. Still, all of our justifications have to apply. Particle moves left from pi over 3 to pi over 2 since v of t is less than 0. And the particle is stopped. I've got the i here. At uh, t equals 0 and pi over 3 since v of t is equal to 0. And we're done with part A. Okay, that, that wasn't too bad. Something that we did last semester, so not, not too terribly bad. Now, part B says, and I have that written out already, what is, find the particle's displacement. Now, displacement is net. Remember, displacement matters that you went right, left, okay? And so uh, displacement is just equal to the integral of 6 sine 3t dt from 0 to pi over 2. Because it doesn't matter if it, ha it went right right or left, it's going to net out all the area. So 
All right, so let's do the antiderivative. I'm going to pull the 6 out in front here, 0 to pi over 2. And um, that's going to be sine of 3t dt. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. It's going to be negative 6 uh, cosine 3t divided by 3. Um, evaluated between 0 and pi over 2. I'm going to simplify it one more time. So it's going to be negative 6, I mean, sorry, negative 2, because 6 over 3 is 2. So negative 2 cosine of 3t evaluated between 0 and pi over 2. So what happens when we plug in pi over 2 using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2? Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So this is going to be uh, 0 minus what happens when we plug in 0? Well, the cosine of 0 is 1. So it's going to be negative 2. And so the displacement is negative 2 between 0 and between 0 and uh, pi over 2. Oh, I'm sorry, not negative 2, positive 2. That means that the particle netted a plus 2, uh, no matter whether it went right, left, or, or any other reason, okay? So that's good. And then it said if, if f of 0 is 3, what is the particle's final position? Well, the particle's final position is going to be where it started at 3 plus its displacement. <clears throat> so I like to write a function for my, my position. And that's going to, at any time t, that's going to be, I'm going to start at time equals 0, and I'm going to end at t, and I'm going to put the velocity here in terms of x, because I have to use a dummy variable, because my variables where I'm stopping. And my initial condition, when, when t is 0, I plug a 0 in here, the integral is 0, but I have to be at position 3, so I'm going to put a plus 3. Okay, and so my final position is going to be x of uh, <clears throat> pi over 2, is going to equal the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of v of x dx plus 3. Now, we already did this. That was the displacement. So this is going to equal 2 plus 3, or 5 is the final position. <coughs> All right. Um, so I like you guys to be able to set up a position at time t function. So this is a position at any t. That's a good thing to be able to do. And then you can plug it in. And we already evaluated this, and we knew that was 2 because we did that up here. All right, moving on. Part C says find the total distance traveled. Well, now the total distance traveled. for any particle is equal to the integral from time t equals 1 to time t equals 2 of v of t dt, but it's the absolute value because this is where direction doesn't matter. It matters <coughs> how far you actually walked or traveled or went left and right and then the distance will all be positive. Well, if you recall our sign chart from before, our particle, we're putting it back over here, was moving right from 0 to pi over 3, and then it was moving left from pi over 3 to pi over 2. So what we have to do if we don't have a calculator is we have to integrate from 0 to pi over 3. So the total distance traveled here is going to be, and I'm going to abbreviate this TDT for total distance traveled, is going to equal the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of uh, 6 sine of 3t dt. And that's positive because the velocity is positive. So I know that area under that curve is going to be positive. Uh, plus or minus. Well, if I put a plus here, this area is going to be negative down here. And so that would be a positive number minus a negative area, but I want that negative area to become positive, so I'm going to subtract from pi over 3 to pi over 2 of 6 sine 3t dt. So this is an effect 
making the absolute value come true because I'm taking and forcing the negative area to be positive because this area right here, just this area, the integral from pi over three to pi over two is negative. And when I make it negative, it becomes positive. And that'll be the total distance traveled. All right, so we integrated already in our last step, uh, sign, six sine, six sine of three T. Remember it was negative two cosine three T. So I'm not gonna integrate that again because we did that already. So negative two cosine of three T evaluated between zero and pi over three minus negative two cosine three T evaluated between pi over three and pi over two. Now when I do this, I'm expecting this to be a negative number when I'm done and then we'll force it positive. So let's see what happens when I plug in the numbers. So the cosine of pi over three times three, well, that's the cosine of pi. The cosine of pi is negative one. So that's a two minus, and then I'm gonna plug zero in. I plug zero and the cosine of zero is one. One times negative two is negative two. So this is gonna be a four works out minus. Now what happens when we plug in pi over two? We get the cosine of three pi over two, which is zero minus. <clears throat> when I plug in pi over three, I get the cosine of three pi over three, which is cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is a negative number. A negative number times negative two is a positive number. So it's gonna be two. And there it is, it's a negative two, which makes sense. And so I'm gonna get four minus a minus two, which is plus two, which is six. So the displacement is six units. Uh, and you can see that, I'm sorry, the total distance yeah. traveled is six units. You can see the displacement would be the positive area minus the negative, And that's where the two came from, from the displacement on the previous page. Okay, so that's 8-1, uh, number two. Let's do number four. Number four, I'm not gonna write the instructions again because I think we got the instructions down. All right, so number four, they're giving us a velocity of uh, 6t squared minus 18t plus 12, and we're gonna go between zero and two. All right, and I need to do a, a, first of all, part A is to find out where the particle is uh, moving left, right, and stopped, or right, left, and stopped. So I need to do a sign chart for the velocity. So let's uh, factor this velocity out. I can take a six out of everything, minus three T plus two, and we get six times T, 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 one, minus, minus. So that's at T equals one and T equals two. So if I do a sign chart for the velocity between zero and two, I already know at one, I'm zero, and at two, I'm zero. And this is a quadratic that's gonna pass through its zeros. So let's do these two groups in position. They're passing through my zero. So this is positive. And then this is negative. And so I can say particle moves right between zero and one since V of T is greater than zero. Particle moves left from one to two since V of T is less than zero. The particle is stopped at X, or I shouldn't say X, I should say T because we are in time. T equals uh, one and two since V of T is equal to zero. All right, that's part A. Part B says, I need to find the displacement in the particle's final position. So I'm gonna do this all on one sheet. So, okay, so part B, the displacement
is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2 of the velocity, which is uh, 6t squared minus 18t plus 12 dt. And I don't need the absolute value bars because I want it to net out. So this is going to be uh, 6t oh, cubed over 3, which becomes 2t cubed. Uh, t squared over 2, which becomes minus 9t squared. Hmm. Uh, plus 12t, all evaluated between 0 and 2. And <clears throat> so then we get, uh, that's going to be, if I plug in 2 using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, we're going to get 8 times 2, which is 16, minus um, um, 36, because that's uh, 9 times 4, plus... 24 and uh, let's see 24 and 16 is 40 minus 36 turns out to be a displacement of four units okay displacement of four units they also said if our position of their particle at time equals zero is three well they used s so i'll use s of t i'm sorry i used x in the beginning one but that's going to be the integral between um, 0 and some time t of the velocity function of x dx, using a dummy variable here, uh, plus 3. And I want to know what its final position is, which is s of 4, which is going to be the integral between, I'm sorry, s of 2. s of 2, because that's the final uh, in our intervals, t equals 2. So uh, v of x dx plus 3, and we already integrated between 0 and 2, and so that's going to equal this, which we said was 4 plus 3, and so we're going to be 7 at, at 7 is our final position. Because our displacement was 4 from where we started at 3. Okay? All right, part C says I want the total distance traveled. Total distance traveled, if we recall, is going to be equal to the integral of the velocity dt from time 1 to time 2. All right, so what we want to know is the integral from 0 to 2 of the absolute value of 6t squared minus 18t minus tw or plus 12 dt. Whoops, I'm sorry, this is absolute value. First half I broke down. Okay. Now, in order to do the absolute value of our function, we have to know when it's going to be negative. And if you look back on our sign chart here, we notice that the velocity is positive from 0 to 1, and it's negative from 1 to 2. So we have to have two integrals. And so we know this is going to be from 0 to 1 of 6t squared minus 18t plus 12 uh, dt plus or minus, because we're going to make the negative area positive, 1 to 2 of 6t squared minus 18t plus 12 dt. And remember, we don't have to integrate it again because we integrated it once already. And that we got that 2t cubed. Right. We found the antiderivative already, so let's not do that work over again. We get 2t cubed minus 9t squared plus 12t, evaluated between 0 and 1, minus 2t cubed minus 9t squared plus 12t, evaluated between 1 and 2. All right, so what happens when we plug 1 in here? Uh, we get 2 minus 9 plus 12 minus, we plug 0 and it wipes it out. That's nice. Minus, now let's see what happens when we plug 2 in here. Well, we plugged 2 in there last time and we got um, we got 4. And when we plug 1 in, we get... Uh, 2 minus 9 plus 12. 
All right, so uh, 14 minus 9 is 5 minus, uh, let's see, 5 minus 4 is 1. Well, I'm just going to put this down, minus 4. And then this is going to be, this is 5. So uh, that's going to be a minus a minus, which is going to be a plus. So five, minus 4, and then a minus a minus 5 is a plus 5. So we're going to get uh, 10 minus 4, which is 6. So our um, total distance traveled looks like is 6 units. I wonder if that makes sense. Um, anyway, I'll check that in just a second. Um, use my calculator because I have a calculator. I'm a little bit concerned about my numbers, but let's see what happens. So I did it really fast. All right, I'm going to clear that out and let's do our integral here. And I'm going to use absolute value bars. <coughs> so I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, F3. I'm going to integrate. And I'm going to integrate, what, 6t squared, 6t to the second, minus 18t, plus 12, comma with respect to t, uh, comma 0, comma 2, close the parentheses. But what I'm going to do is put the absolute value in here. I forgot to do that. So alpha a, alpha b, alpha s. Parentheses gives me the absolute value, and I need to put that around here, so we're going to put it on the other side of the 12. And we get 6. I should have trusted my math. You know, I just get nervous sometimes. But there we go. That's the uh, total distance traveled by the particle. And I forced the negative area here to be positive. All right. So that is two examples. Now let's do... Example number six. And that'll be my last one. All right, example number six. Um, we're going to be given the velocity is equal to the square root of four minus t. And um, the time is going to be between zero and four. <clears throat> All right, so for part A, we're supposed to figure out when the, the particle is moving right, left, or stopped. So in order to do that, I need to do a sign chart for velocity, and I need to know when the velocity is uh, zero. So the 4 minus t has to be greater than or equal to zero, right, if I'm finding the domain and doing a sign chart. So 4 makes it zero. And the, this is a negative line, right? So under here, I have a negatively sloped line. So all my y values are positive on this end. And I'm going to go from 0 to 4. And it looks like my particle is always moving right. And I'll put the interval over the interval 0 to 4 since, and you notice I have this open because I know it's going to be equal to 0 at 4, since v of t is greater than 0. Particle is never moving left since v of t is Never. Negative. And we should have, when you're at, when you're answering a question, because they asked about when it was moving right, left, and stop, you should address the fact that it's not moving left in your answer. And then you can say the particle is stopped at t equals 4 since v of t is equal to 0. All right, <clears throat> easy so far. Now part B, I'm supposed to find the displacement 
between 0 and 4. And that's going to be the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of uh, 4 minus t dt. And I'm going to do some u sub here. And we're going to let u equal 4 minus t. du equals uh, negative dt. Negative du equals dt. So we can say that this is the integral. Remember, I don't put these limits of integration on here because now I've changed my variable from, from t to u. So this is going to be u to the 1 half du with a negative out in front here. And if we find the antiderivative of that, we raise the power 1, so we get u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, but it's negative. But what is u? Well, u was 4 minus t. So our displacement is going to be, after we evaluate it, going to equal this integral here. It's going to be um, negative 2, uh, 4 minus t to the 3 halves over 3, evaluated between 0 and 4. And so um, we're going to go, when I plug the 4 in here, I get 0. And then when I plug 0 in here, I get 4 minus the square root of 4. 4 minus 0, which is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. And so that's minus um, 8 times 2 is negative 16 over 3, which turns out to be 16 thirds is the, the, dis, the displacement. Oops, you can't see that. I'm sorry you couldn't see that. All right, that's displacement. Now, they want us to know where we are at time equals three, uh, four, since uh, I'm going to come up with a position function, right? Because they said that s of zero equals three, so I know the position function s of t is going to equal the integral from um, t equals zero to t of the velocity dx plus three, because we started at three, at time equals zero. And I want s of 4. Well, that's just going to be, that's the position at 4, the integral from 0 to 4 of uh, v of x dx plus 3. Well, we know this we just figured out was 16 thirds plus 9 over 3, which will be uh, 25 over 3 units. That's where you'll be standing. Okay. Now, let's talk about the total distance traveled. Since this particle is only moving right, is the total distance traveled equal to the net? And the answer is yes. So the total distance traveled is equal to the net. We're going to know that that's absolute value from t1 to t2, okay? But if our velocity is already positive, the total distance traveled in this case is going to be the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of 4 minus t dt because the absolute value of the square root that's already positive is still going to be positive. So the total distance traveled in this case is going to be 16 thirds units. So it matches because the velocity is always greater than 0, all right? So that's enough of my examples for today, and hopefully that'll help you work for 8-1.